everybody. It's Lisa, the owner of Vintage Gypsy and the admin of Silhouette Cameo School for Newbies. Um, I'm going to do an updated video on using the subtract function for version 4.1. I have one out there for 3, but 4.1 is going to be sticking around for a while, so I'm going to try and update some of the videos. This is really easy to do, a lot easier than you think. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and find a shape, which I usually have in my library, somewhere fancy like that. Make sure you're signed in by double clicking on it and it will sync itself. Go to the search bar at the top and I'm looking for a heart. So I'm going to grab these. Oh, I like those better. Grab those hearts since it is Valentine's Day, right? So these are stuck together. So I need to right click, ungroup. If yours does not need to be ungrouped or anything like that, if you just have a single design, don't worry about ungrouping it. So I'm very visual, and I suggest if you're a newbie, you probably need to be visual. You need to make this look like how you want your finished design to be. So I select my design. I do go in and change my colors to match the way I want my design to look. You can either go here to the artist palette, to the fill panel, or you can go to the quick access bar at the top and change your color. I'm going to make mine pink. I want a line around it. Going to take the line out. So the line color is here, but it is also here. I'm all about trying to find the fastest way to do it. Okay, so here it is. So we're going to put in here, oh, the word love just because it is Valentine's Day. What I did with the other one. So if you want to type in a font like I did, you're going to go to the left hand side and click on the big A. That allows you to type your text. If you want to change your text, you're going to go to the left hand side or the right hand side and click on the A to open your textile panel. So I want you to think of these little buttons like little filing cabinets. So I click on the A filing cabinet, my textile panel, and then underneath that it has three little tabs or three filing drawers. I want to find a font that's pretty and fancy because it is Valentine's Day. One trick is you can go to your textile window, highlight where the text words are, and you can actually start typing in. Just like that. If you want to do the glyphs, you have to have designer edition or higher. It is in the next cabinet or the filing drawer right here. You click on that and you start scrolling down. You start seeing all the different fancy little swirls. They typically start out in alphabetical order, um, all caps in the beginning, and then it comes down to the lowercase alphabet. I want to change my E. So let's go and find an E. Oh, here we go. Here's one. So double click on your words to bring it up where you can see the blue bar or you can edit something you just typed. If you have already welded this and grouped it or released the compound path, you're not going to be able to do this. So make sure it's a freshly typed font, delete that out, and then find the E that you like. And only click once. I'm a double clicker, so that's why I've got two E's in there. Then click off of it. That's how you would go in and change all these glyphs. Really cool function that we have now. So now I'm going to click on my words and I'm going to make it fit into my little heart. I'm going to go this way. Oh, not that one. I'm going to put the heart back on. I click on the words. It's a testy little thing sometimes. And then I'm going to reshape this. And for me, I don't care if it's all the way inside. Part of me liking it is where it's not all completely inside the little heart shape. I'm going to make it longer. Now one thing I'm going to show you you need to do, if I zoom in, see these overcut lines? You want to make sure that those are welded, meaning they become one completely fluid word, kind of like when you write in cursive. You don't stop at this little section here and pick up again. So you want it to be completely fluid with a nice flow to it. So make sure it is selected. And then you're going to go, you can right click and go to weld here, or you can use the quick access toolbar at the top and click on the weld. You notice that those go away. If when you weld the word and it comes up and it has a bunch of little boxes around it, that means you need to group it. This one fortunately did not. So now I'm going to show you how you use the subtract button. It is not up here in a cool little fancy toolbar up at the top, but you need to make sure that you have both components selected. You're going to go to the Modify panel. So that's another Modify of Cabinet. Okay, so I'm going to click right here on Subtract, 
and it's going to pop that out. Basically like stamping it with a cookie cutter, right? Now you notice that all of this is ungrouped. All those boxes means that it's ungrouped. If I were to click off of it and do this to try and move it, I'd say a lot of cuss words. So you want to go and select everything and use your grouping at the top in that quick access toolbar or you can right click. And that's just as simple as using to learn how to use the subtract button. If you guys have any questions, you guys are welcome to check us out on the Silhouette Cameo School for Newbies Facebook page, or you can also see more videos on my business page at VintageGypsy73.com and check us out on YouTube. Thank you.